Hi everyone, welcome to Token Topics. I hope everyone out there is doing great. The topic of this video is Ripple XRP. We're gonna dive into the latest news and see what's going on, not only with the Ripple lawsuit, but also XRP and world events and how the dollar is looking to die. We're also gonna hear some words from Ashish Birla from the latest Ripple drop and also go over Ripple's liquidity hub and why this is a big deal for the XRP ecosystem. Also, some great news came out of Canada, so you don't want to miss this video. If you're a Ripple XRP fan, watch the video all the way to the end. Please hit the like and subscribe. And remember, I'm not a financial advisor. Please invest at your own risk. Also, I'm not paid for or sponsored by Ripple. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the content. Again, I like to let my listeners and viewers now more than ever is the time to keep your crypto safe and get a hardware wallet. Especially with talk about cyber attacks, there's no better decision than to get your crypto off the exchanges and onto a hardware wallet. Descent Wallet is running an amazing deal through Token Topics. I'm going to put an affiliate link in the description below and you can see the markdown price. It's only $109. You're getting an amazing discount. All right, so we got some excellent news that just came out today that Ripple's technology is to be used by a Canadian top bank for cross-border payments. Even John Deaton tweeted out his excitement for this. So he stated that we're excited to be working with CIBC and have already partnered with them in using Ripple's blockchain technology to complete international payment transfers between our banks as proof of concept. What's even better is that one of Australia's major four banks openly stated on their website that it is partnering with Canada CIBC using Ripple's blockchain network technology. So that is excellent news. I'm going to put the article from you today in the description below, but it just continues that as reported previously by you today that Ripple reports that its flagship on-demand liquidity product was close to achieving global coverage. The service, which was formerly known as XRapid, is currently operating in 22 destination markets, the report states. If you think about this, on top of an SEC lawsuit, that it just shows that nothing is going to stop this technology and nothing is going to stop XRP from being used worldwide. It's just going to continue to grow. All right, now this happened back in March 16th, just a few days ago. I just want to uh, reiterate on this, that Ripple welcomes Michael Warren to the board of directors. Now think about this. We know that Rosie Rios has also joined uh, Ripple. We know that now Michael Warren has joined Ripple. Rosie Rios is a former U.S. treasurer. So if you do the math, you really think about it. These people, through an SEC lawsuit, have decided to work with Ripple. Now, Michael Warren, prior to his tenure at ASG, Warren served as the administration's on the administrations, rather, of two U.S. presidents, and he was senior advisor of the White House Presidential Personal Office during President Barack Obama's first term. And in 2010, President Obama appointed Warren to serve on the board of directors of the Overseas Private Investment Corporation. What this does is reaffirm our position with XRP. I mean, if you really comprehend and know what you hold, these people are not stupid, and they would not be taking these positions on the board of Ripple if they thought that it was going nowhere. No, they know exactly where XRP is going. All right, on to another topic. So we know that the printing of money from governments around the world, especially the United States, the printing of money is devaluing the face of the dollar. And if the dollar is supposed to be the world's reserve currency, that is a huge problem for the rest of the world. Now, if people want to live in... Uh, a fantasy world thinking that we could just print money and everything's going to be okay, that's only going to last for so long. If you think about what happened just in the recent past couple of years, you had the pandemic. That was a massive world event, right? It even slowed down commerce. Businesses were closed down, shut down, um, and so on. And now we have the Ukraine crisis and the Ukraine war and even sanctions cutting Russia off from SWIFT. If you do the math and you know that the global debt is only increasing, that these are distractions is really what they are. 
because what's going on behind the scenes with these brick nations and other countries are buying up precious metals behind the scenes the mainstream media is not reporting on this and this is why it's very important to pay attention and to know exactly what's going on the whole monetary system is changing right before our eyes these are things that are going on that most people are oblivious to a hundred plus nations have global agreement now being deployed called project sandman to drop and end a dollar's dominance also russia has a hundred and forty billion dollar gold stash that no one wants to buy banks are restocking gold at the fastest pace they've ever done in years i mean something major is going on Okay, so I want to show you this article, Countdown to the Collapse of the Petrodollar, and that is a certain. America's dollar dominance is coming to a sudden catastrophic end. Total chaos will follow. That's what I was talking about, all these distractions going on. That's not to say that these world events are very real, but these are the domino effects of what's caught of a result of so much global debt. So the article continues that Project Sandman describes a hundred plus nation agreement that when triggered will see those nations simultaneously dump the dollar and abandon the petrodollar status that has allowed the U.S. to enjoy 50 years of fiat currency counterfeiting and material abundance at the expense of everyone else. Of course, talk about the flip of the switch moment. If anything, that would cause a flip of the switch. Now, that's why I've been stating on this channel that this is a big deal of why all these nations are buying up and stockpiling gold. It's common sense. Do the math. So the true catastrophe is when this decision is triggered, the dollar and all dollar denominated assets will plunge to near zero literally overnight. So what else have we been talking about that will happen overnight? The reset. This is so this is why it's so important to have your money and assets that you know is a hedge against this inflation. If you're watching this video and you like the content, please hit the like and subscribe for further content. I've been stating on this channel for a long time that we are going to a completely new monetary system. I personally think that we're going to be surprised to a gold standard and these ISO 20022 tokens that I've been talking about a lot on this channel, they are going to skyrocket in price because that is going to be the flip of the switch. The whole monetary system is going to change and switch over to the new QFS system. I've also stated many times on this channel that SWIFT is dying. They're dead. But a lot of times in the media and the news, they want to make you think that they have an advantage or SWIFT isn't going away. Let me just give, I want to give you an example of a crappy article that, that states this. This is literally a financial war that we're witnessing right now. And you're going to hear two sides of, of, of the story. So this is an article from Forbes that why no one from Ripple to Russia has been able to topple the SWIFT monopoly. In an effort to sanction Russia, President Vladimir Putin for invading Ukraine, a little known but an incredibly powerful organization known as SWIFT has entered a zeitgeist. which continues that among the earliest attempts was by a San Francisco-based Ripple, founded in 2012 as a digital assets company commonly associated with XRP, the cryptocurrency, and valued at $15 billion. In 2016, the firm hired SWIFT board member Marcus Treacher as its global head of strategic accounts and the following year 2017 it launched RippleNet as a messaging platform similar to SWIFT before layering on transaction settlement using digital assets in 2018 since its inception RippleNet has openly billed itself as a competitor to SWIFT and the SWIFT system does not offer humanity a level playing field and that was that's a major problem i believe that it's this time that we've hit the tipping point we've hit critical mass where not only the the dangers of the centralized swiss system is to the rest of the world but also the the amount of debt that the governments around the world have created with printing money i think that they've actually they've a, been able to fit swift to fit their needs. The amount of debt that the world is in, the abuse of power 
that the Swiss system has caused on nations. The printing of money, the whole monetary system is is done. It, the whole system is trash and it needs to be replaced. Ripple's technology has and always will be a threat to Swift's monopoly. And this is why a large ring in the banking sector runs Swift, okay? And that's a big reason why we've seen so much resistance against Ripple's technology and against XRP holders is due to the fact that it is a complete threat to the Swift system. All right, the next topic. Now, if you've been subscribed to the channel, you know that I talk a lot about the world returning to a gold standard is what I, I firmly believe. We've even heard from Jerome Powell, who stated that the world can have more than just one reserve currency. It has been an essential component in the financial reserves of nations for centuries, and its appeal is showing no sign of diminishing, with central banks set to be the net purchasers of gold once again this year. Indeed, central banks now hold more than 35,000 metric tons of the metal, about a fifth of all gold ever minted. But what is it all about? The gold that has made it such a key asset for so long. So one of gold's primary roles for central banks is to diversify their reserves. The banks are responsible for their nation's currencies, but these can be subject to swings in value depending upon perceived strengths or weaknesses of the underlying economy. At times of need, banks may be forced to print more money since interest rates or traditional lever of monetary control have been stuck near zero for over a decade. This increase in money supply may be necessary to stave off economic turmoil, but at the cost of devaluing the currency. And that's what we're seeing right now. The, the paper money is going to toilet paper. Gold carries no credit or counterparty risk. It serves as a source of trust in the country and all economic environments making it one of the most crucial reserve assets worldwide alongside government bonds. Now, going back to, as I stated about the current monetary system, it's beyond repair. It's beyond repair. This is what they're not telling you in the media. This is what they're not announcing to the public, is that the, the amount of debt that the world is in from printing money, it's beyond repair. This is why I personally believe the buying up these precious metals and these golds by the by not only banks and governments or so forth, deals have already been done behind the scenes. We've already covered the BRICS nations quite a bit on this channel. And if you are not subscribed and you want to learn more, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe. So we know that a, something, a major event is just on the horizon. And all we need is this one more domino to fall. The pandemic was a major domino. Now this war going on with Ukraine is another major domino effect. And now we're starting to see the dominoes fall to a point where a major change or shift is coming. We cannot continue to print money at the rate that we've been doing so. It's unsustainable. It cannot continue. I think it fully makes sense to have a reset to buy up these precious metals, replace the plumbing of the world's financial system, and at the right time, present it to the world. I think we, get, we need one more major domino to fall. The pandemic, the Ukraine crisis, the war with Russia showing us the sanctions against Russia, the SWIFT system, and, and turmoil. We need one more major domino to fall, and the world's going to accept this change show you that RippleNet listed as a direct alternative to SWIFT by Arab Monetary Fund Group. Right there, you can see it, right there. How Ripple is collaborating with a Wells Fargo partner to replace SWIFT. So the dominoes keep falling. All right, next topic. Now we're going to hear some words from Ashish Birla, who is a general manager at RippleNet that he's responsible for RippleNet product, engineering, sales, marketing, and customer success function. So let's hear some words from him. Ashish, 2021 was a really big year for on-demand liquidity. We're going to talk about that in a second, but let's get back to the basics, you know, the foundations of the market in general. What is liquidity and why is on-demand liquidity important? That's a, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, at the very, very beginning, uh, when there was Bitcoin, uh, the first thing you wanted to do was make Bitcoin liquid. 
And what that meant was uh, you can interchange it for US dollars. And that is facilitated through uh, something called a crypto exchange. Uh, Coinbase, Bitstamp, Bitso, and LATAM are exchanges, and they facilitate liquidity. And the great thing about crypto liquidity is that it's easier to move around the world uh, compared to something like uh, fiat currency uh, that needs a large number of banks and central banks to make it liquid and move around the world. So that's a great thing about crypto is that it's way more liquid and over the years it's becoming more and more liquid. You know, if you look at the market today, uh, hundreds of billions of dollars in cryptos traded on a daily basis. That is up from 2013 when it wasn't, wasn't even crossing a billion dollars in liquidity. As we see more and more crypto liquidity come into the market, uh, we're able to offer a better product experience. That means you can send cross-border payments uh, for a cheaper rate. And we're in 22 destination markets with on-demand liquidity. And that was a core piece of feedback that we heard from customers. They want that product, but they want it in more destinations. We're close to having global coverage of ODL, which is super exciting. Apple's liquidity hub will enable enterprise companies all right, next topic Ashish Birla is going to speak about is Ripple's liquidity hub. So to get a better understanding of what it is, let's go ahead and watch this quick video. Ripple's liquidity hub will enable enterprise companies to easily and efficiently source digital assets. It's no longer an idea or something on the horizon. It's here, a reality today, crypto. And it's already a part of how businesses and people trade, move, and manage value. In 2021, established financial institutions such as PayPal, Square, Visa, and MasterCard built out crypto-based products and services. This type of institutional enthusiasm indicates that crypto is here to stay. Today, enterprises are looking to diversify asset holdings, to offer crypto trading services to end customers, to pay employees in crypto, and to accept crypto as a form of payment. To support these activities, institutions need access to crypto liquidity. Coming in 2022 and beyond, at Ripple, we're building Liquidity Hub. Once launched, Ripple's Liquidity Hub platform will enable companies to seamlessly access crypto from a variety of venues. The product will support a turnkey integration and allow companies to offer their end customers the ability to buy, sell, and hold crypto. Enterprises will be able to maintain separate accounts via Ripple's custody solution and monitor and analyze transactions through a comprehensive dashboard. But that will be just the beginning for Liquidity Hub. As a leading liquidity platform, it will enable many additional enterprise applications for crypto and serve as a cost-effective way to source a variety of new and cutting-edge crypto assets. Join us for this exciting journey. As a new product that's launching, Liquidity Hub. So how did on-demand liquidity influence the creation of Liquidity Hub? It's a great question. So uh, over the years, we've been really, really good and experts in provisioning global crypto liquidity around the world. Uh, no one has processed more in cross-border payments using crypto liquidity than Ripple. So we've become experts on provisioning uh, liquidity through market makers, third-party market makers, We've been experts in tapping into global liquidity using exchanges around the world. And when our customers started asking us, hey, uh, we can source cross-border payment liquidity from uh, your products. Is there a possibility that we can offer our customers uh, digital assets such as Bitcoin and Ether and so forth? We already had all the infrastructure built for ODL and we had uh, expertise in building crypto liquidity. So it was a really natural evolution of our product set. And we were able to bring the product to market a lot quicker because we had all this infrastructure built. Ripple has taken a crypto first world approach. And with Liquidity Hub, it has functionality for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a bunch of other coins on launch. Can you get a little bit into that functionality and, and how specifically that works? Yeah, you can think of it as, uh, you can think of Liquidity Hub as uh, Google Flights or Kayak, uh, but for crypto liquidity. We are going to integrate across a number of different exchanges, uh, leveraging a lot of that infrastructure that we already built for ODL, and find the best rate 
for how much uh, liquidity you want to source um, in terms of you know the cryptos that we offer. That should be a one integration into our product uh, to get the best rates across uh, all these different liquidity venues. Essentially, like it should be a pretty turnkey experience for our customers who want to offer uh, the ability to buy uh, and hold crypto on behalf of their customers. Success in Liquidity Hub sort of hinges on adoption and engagement from enterprise. What kind of response have you seen from institutions in this sector and also you know, the greater crypto community? What we've heard from the market is that with our expertise in building out liquidity products for enterprises, banks, uh, payment providers, uh, fintechs across the world, folks trust us for new use cases that involve crypto. For a lot of folks, uh, getting into crypto is uh, a potentially uh, you know, scary thing and they want a trusted company like Ripple to help bring them along on this journey. The actual response has been uh, outstanding. Uh, a lot of folks are coming to us first uh, with uh, trying to learn more about not only Liquidity Hub, but also like, you know, a cross sell into ODL. To the next topic, I have a special Decent Wallet announcement for iOS users if you have an Apple device. So the Decent app for iOS has been updated with changes the method of accessing NFT collections held in a user's account. And I'm going to show you, it's very simple. So the new way to access the NFT collections for the iOS users, users NFT collections could be accessed from the discovery tab menu by entering the URL address of the collectibles page. So you just go one, go to discovery tab right here at the bottom. Then two, in the search line, enter the following URL up here. Just put in your URL right there. So it's simple. In the search line, you're just going to put in this URL, the collectibles.decentwallet.com. And add the site to your favorite list. So after you put in the URL, then you're going to click Add to Favorites. And then you can see from the list, you can add any network is fine. And just click Add. And then you can see it's going to show up as your favorites right there your Decent Collection. Now I'm gonna put the link to this down below so you can go through the instructions thoroughly. But as you can see, it's very simple and straightforward. I'd like to let my listeners and viewers know that keep in mind that you can follow Decent Wallet on the Medium right here so you can stay up to date with all announcements. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and put your comments and thoughts down below. I always love to read them. And what are your thoughts on this whole XRP lawsuit? Are we getting close to a settlement? I sure hope so. I want to say thank you, everyone, for watching another edition of Token Topics, and you all take care out there.